हेलो सैसी नारी थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग मी टूडे आज का टॉपिक थोड़ा सेंसिटिव है बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डेथ मोस्ट ऑफ अस आर स्केयर ऑफ इवन टॉकिंग अबाउट इट चाहे वो दूसरों से हो या अपने आप से ही क्यों ना हो तो टॉपिक तो सीरियस है बट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ लाइट हार्टेड एंड इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्वर्सेशन अबाउट इट एंड एक्चुअली यू विल रिलेट टू अ लॉट ऑफ वॉट वी से आई एम स्पीकिंग विद नंदिता बासु नंदिता इज अ कॉमिक बुक आर्टिस्ट एंड अ म्यूजिशियन She loves to daydream, eat gummy bears, play music and draw. The Piano, her first book received wide critical acclaim. Her latest book is Starry Starry Night. Nandita's definition of death is quite interesting. We'll talk about how we adults come to terms with it before explaining death to our kids. We'll also talk about dealing with loss and grief or isme art and music hamari kaise help kar sakta hai. Before hearing from Nandita, please follow Little Fixes on your podcast app and share this episode with a friend who might benefit from it. Hey Sassy Nari, welcome to Little Fixes. This is your host Matri, a social media professional, a mother and a simple yet sassy woman just like you. Join me for sweet, simple and practical ideas that help you in transforming into your best self. This mental health and personal growth podcast is a reminder that you matter. And now to our guest. Hi Nandita, welcome to Little Fixes. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. So thank you for having me on the show. So Nandita, we are here to discuss a very deep and kind of an uncomfortable topic. We'll be talking about discussing death. And uh, I was reading your book before we hopped on this call, Starry Starry Night. So I was reading it and one idea which you have talked about a lot in it that death is your personalized time portal to another dimension so it was a very uh, sci-fi i think usme bhi you have mentioned i was also thinking time travel or maybe port ban gaya usse ab chale gaye idhar se udhar dusri taraf so it was a very intriguing idea for me and uh, as adults i think we are so afraid of death like it has not been discussed hamare agar kisi ki death ho jati to it said that uh, they have expired so now i find this <laughs> word even funny so because we are going to talk about uh, talking about deaths with kids but before that i also want to understand how do we adults come to terms with it because hum log to grow up most of us have not grown up talking about it most of us have grown up scared of it so how do we start to making ourselves understand and come to terms with it well that's a very very good question you know and uh, that's um, exactly where i think uh, one has to start from like because you use the right word hum log we're very uncomfortable with the idea of death uncomfortable is the word so whenever we are uncomfortable we shove it aside now how do you expect a child to kind of uh, you know understand it if adults have been running away from it okay so uh, so you've got a very valid question there and which is why i think my book is not just specifically for uh, children or like young adults it's very specifically for anybody who wants to kind of you know have some understanding and when i say understanding is not a guide book for death or anything but you know uh, death is always you see a personal experience you brought up the portal thing death is not like if i die it's me dying right mm-hmm. so it's very personal so it's my car it's going mm-hmm. to be my journey even if you lose someone it's your personal experience is nobody else's so mm-hmm. in whatever form it is always a personal experience and the first thing i mean to answer your question i think uh, adults need to start getting comfortable with the idea of death because it's not something uh, that is separate from life everybody wants to live life but nobody wants to acknowledge that a very integral part of life is death and mm-hmm. death is not a bad thing it is not a mm. it can cause you grief it can cause you pain but death is not a bad thing so first let's get that idea out of the way i mean mm. if you think about it do you want to really constantly live forever in the same way eating the same uh, chocolate cake driving the same i don't know bmw car no at some point you're going to be tired you will mm. want to you know move mm. over so death is not a sad thing so the minute as an adult you understand no look this is not sad this is something we need to understand and if you understand that death is something that can help you live life better automatically your conversations open up mm-hmm. so that is the first step 
for any mm-hmm. adult to kind of take see i remember as a kid uh, i was very sensitive uh, my great grandmother died i don't i don't remember how old i was back then but i do remember that around the age of 7 8 i used to think a lot about it and i used to keep thinking कि जब मम्मी पापा सौ साल के हो जाएंगे बिकॉज आई वॉज टॉट कि हंड्रेड ईयर्स तक भी लिव मम्मी पापा सौ साल के हो जाएंगे तब वो मर जाएंगे तो आई यूज टू क्राई इन बेड एंड इवन आस्क माई पेरेंट्स कि फिर आप लोग मर जाओगे वेरी डायरेक्ट एंड माई फादर यूज टू से कुछ नहीं जाके सो जाओ तो देर नेवर टॉक अबाउट इट नाउ वेन आई थिंक अबाउट इट आई ऑल्स फाइंड इट my uh, you know directness funny but i also feel that uh, they were also kind of evading the question they were not comfortable talking about it and uh, recently uh, one of my friends uh, she told me that her father is very open about it like she he sat her down and told her how he wants his last rites to be done by her and what all he wants so i found it uh, suddenly very shocking then i thought about it and i found it mature also so uh, there there are different types of people but i think most of us fall in the first category and uh, uh, then my father when i lost him in uh, 2021 uh, it was a very difficult time and uh, i still think about him every day my daughter we could not tell her right away she was just 4 then and we told her later she used to think ki kya ho gaya kaise ho gaya and now she has come to terms with it ki ha theek hai uh, nana nahi hai but now she is very scared of death uh, though we keep telling her but she is scared of the idea of having to live alone to usko maine pehle to bata diya tha ki star ban jate hain then i read about your idea ye porthole wala i haven't told this to her yet but i really like it and i would like for you to elaborate upon your idea of death like how do you define it and what do you think happens right so see the thing is you know um, i have like a uh, gone through uh, very close experiences of losing people as well you know uh, very dear people i lost my father very recently and um, many years back my friend uh, the advantage i had uh, you know when i lost them was everybody was open to talking about it and i say it's an advantage because if you mm-hmm. don't talk about it you can't even help the people to deal with it okay so when you talked about you know your friend uh, you know when i uh, my friend knew she was going to die we all knew there was an expiry date and uh, i remember sitting and joking with my friend where she told me look uh, please you know i have like a new shirt which i bought uh, you know from london a few days back make sure i'm wearing that when you put me on the hearse now it may sound very grim but i kid you not it was the funniest thing at that point and it lightened up a lot of the situation and i did make her wear the shirt on her mm-hmm. deathbed because it just seemed the right thing to do and she told me make sure like you're not sitting and weeping please open the best bottle of wine you mm-hmm. know but when you talk about these things it helps now there are different ways to talk about it i'm not saying you have to make light of the situation um i'm not saying you're not going to feel pain my father and i again with my father i knew he, he was passing away and i am grateful we had uh, time to sit and talk about these things um so we stop often sit and uh, you know discuss what it is to like pass on and uh, one thing the first thing now this is where i want to tell you people think death is a finality mm-hmm. what and especially for indians i don't think we should believe that because in our culture it is not final i think we have enough texts enough like even if you go back to religious mythology uh, any kind of you know spiritual thing you need in our culture especially that is not a finality that is where we are just pretty much losing one aspect which is again going to take form again right mm-hmm. the other aspects still remain just the way it is and you don't have to have a deep spiritual understanding or anything but the first thing is when you understand that it doesn't really end like the person is actually not lost it's not like you never see each other again yes look when you lose something at a physical level there'll be grief which is why i say this is not to bypass pain you are you are born as humans if you love somebody you should feel pain what kind of a human are you if you do not feel pain okay but can i accept that pain with a kind of graciousness 
then the pain transforms into something much more beautiful. You see, and the pain can help you grow. So my understanding of death has come from these personal experiences where it's not like, you know, I don't miss my father. I mean, it's been 22 years my friend has passed away. Every single day, I still think what it would be like, you know. Mm -hmm. So there is the pain, there is the grief, but pain also alters. But I'm not going and sitting and, you know, like saying, why did it happen? It's nature. Just like we are born, we must all die and we must accept it. And which is where I'm going to bring up, you know, there is this very famous like little episode in the Mahabharata. I think everybody knows about it. Uh, mm-hmm. Where, you know, when Yudhishthir, uh, his uh, f- uh, the four brothers had gone into the forest and they don't come back. I think most of us know this story. They don't come back. Yudhishthir mm-hmm. goes to find them and he finds all his brothers dead. Mm-hmm. It turns out that some yakshas or something have, uh, you know, yeah. killed them. So they say, we'll return your brother, but you have to answer like, you know, a few questions. And one of the questions being, so what do you think is the most surprising fact in this world? And the answer you just said is people see everybody around them dying and they believe they themselves will not die. <laughs> yeah, we think it happens to other people. Yes. And the pandemic should have proved otherwise, right? I think we have lost so many dear people. It was such a close confrontation. And uh, that which is what I'm saying in our own, uh, you know, uh, culture, I think it's such a such a rich culture we have. It already tells us don't fear death. There is no part in our culture that says fear death. Okay, we, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in that way, I feel the Western culture, I mean, pardon me, I may be wrong, but this is where like, you know, it becomes like, uh, they don't tackle it in that way. But we have gone into such beautiful depths, you know, I just take up the story of the Mahabharata and you think a child will not, not understand it, they will. At their own level, they will. So the more, you know, we talk about these things and we, you know, fall back on stuff we already believe in, you don't think death is a finality. So that is my understanding or my experience, I would say. It's not just, a, it's not just a, you know, a philosophical understanding. It's something I have felt as well. I'm living mm. it. Uh, it, you know, I mean, physically, I've lost a lot of people, you know, even pets for that matter. I mean, if people think that pets are not a huge thing that hurt you, I mean, uh, you know, when you lose them, it's the same hurt at some level. But at a deeper level, I know the essence is still there. They exist. And, you know, that love is always there. So there is no loss. So the first thing to remember is there is no loss. And that's where I kind of understand that, which is why I said a porthole. You simply fall into another dimension to come back out from another space. The world is eternal. Eternal Mm -hmm. it is. So let's work with eternity instead of trying to think finality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but see, we'll still feel sad because they are still, even if they are in, they are there, but they are not with us in that physical sense. Correct. So mm-hmm. look, sad. Why would you want to bypass sadness? Mm. Right. See, the problem over here. I think the essential problem all of us have with death is. And there will always be grief. There is no way you're not so, you know, if your parents live for 300 years also, tell trust me, it is not going to be enough. You will want them to live for right? another. Yeah. So there is nothing that is like a benchmark of this is enough. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, death always becomes like, I am going to bypass sadness. Unfortunately, that is not life. Let's first face that fact. Okay. So, uh, you can never bypass it. At some point, forget like the body perishing. Yeah, Think about it like this. Today, we have a lot of friends in our life. 10 years down, the down, you may not have them. That's a sort of death also, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. They can exist somewhere. You might have the psychological thing that, okay, they're existing, but they're not in your life. You do not have the same luxury you had with them. Somebody can, you know, say like my dreams died. I mean, even if in the most dramatic way. So Mm -hmm. we are losing out on things every day. Like while I'm speaking to you, our cells are dying. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So uh, we cannot bypass it. So what you cannot bypass, isn't it better to embrace it, to actually understand where, what it is. Mm -hmm. So don't go by. And I mean, that's what the whole book was about. You know, the book was not about to say, you're not going to feel sadness. You're not going to feel grief. Uh, You're going to cry for the rest of your life. But you have loved someone, so you're going to cry. 
just like so if you are if you are lost somebody will cry for you that is mm-hmm. human love you know mm-hmm. yeah and uh, see when my father died i also one thing that came to me when my mother was talking about him she was all about main kaise rahungi ab main akeli ho gayi main ghar mein sabse badi ho gayi mujhe sare decisions lene padenge so i told her i i know it it might sound a little insensitive but in my best way i just asked her ki mummy aap papa ke liye sad ho ya apne liye sad ho kya it suddenly came to me ki apna 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 ho raha hai to i think we come to depend on that person for various things aur uske baad when we experience the loss it's not just that we have lost them i think we are also afraid of living without them कि अब क्या होगा हमारा क्या होगा एक वो थॉट भी कहीं ना कहीं हमारे दिमाग में आ जाता है हैव यू नोटिस सच थिंग्स लुक बिल्कुल आप जो बोल रहे हो सही बोल रहे हो हाउ मेनी टाइम्स आर यू एक्चुअली मिसिंग द पर्सन फॉर द शेयर लव ऑफ इट लेट्स बी ऑनेस्ट यू आर मिसिंग कि देखिए व्हेन आई एम मिसिंग माय फादर आई फील आई एम मिसिंग बिकॉज़ व्हेन आई वॉक इन ही इज नॉट देयर आई एम आई मिसिंग हिम फॉर हिमसेल्फ आई एम मिसिंग बिकॉज़ यू नो सो सी दैट कम्स फ्रॉम अ स्पेस ऑफ फियर फियर आफ्टर ऑल एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इज नॉट लव fear is basically you are missing out on something your purpose is not being served okay my luxury is not there where i can call my father up any more and tell him like you know uh, my car has broken down what should i do yeah But it's not love that is my fear or my convenience what your the pure love of missing someone is actually you know it's uh, it lasts for a shorter period if you notice we are actually we end up missing people because it's a comfort zone for us or like you know ye hamare life mein nahi hai or the fear of being alone which you know yeah. comes in very uh, drastically especially with a certain age you know mm-hmm. let's say somebody has lost a partner or something you know ab mera kya hoga there's nobody for me are you actually missing out on the person no you're missing out on some idea that i won't have anymore so you know mm-hmm. is that i think what you're talking about is 99% of the time all of us go through these emotions the 1% of the pure death experience is something else which is why i'm saying death is not something which we are act- we are not fair- afraid of death per se we are afraid mm-hmm. of you know ab hamara kya hoga Yeah. even like you know i've had the opportunity to be around people who've been sick very sick and they actually know they're going to die sometimes when people are passing on you know the fear is not of death the fear mm-hmm. is of i'm going to suffer fark hai ha huh. bahut fark hai so you're not actually scared of actually moving on mm-hmm. uh, you're fear you're scared of some other thing like okay suffering hoga maybe there is pain where will i get the medical money, money from and these things mm-hmm. so and i'll add in one more thing if i ask anybody over here to visualize your own funeral you know people visualize it very well there is mm. something watching and saying oh my friends will come and cry and all <laughs> ha na so you're visualizing it very well so actually are you even dead because you're visualizing a space where you actually still exist it's such a paradox <laughs> Yeah. You understand what I'm saying. So <laughs> that means you shouldn't be there, but you're visualizing so many things, right? So that itself is such a paradox. And there, if you can start identifying these things, and this is for everyone, you know, whether it's an adult or a child. And I think children start understanding these things better uh, mm-hmm. in their own way. It does. It's not so complicated for them. so again to emphasize them is they will feel the same grief they will feel the same fear but if you actually sit and you know talk to them about it without making it like a taboo let's not talk about it is it that if you can tell a child you turn into a star is it that difficult to tell a child look there are other spaces that exist which is in the book i have like a very simple example like you know when you turn a radio station on you hear one song mm-hmm you turn another radio station on there is another song hmm so at one time so we are all stuck in one radio station right now they seem to have they are watching another movie they are in a different radio station but they're there mm-hmm. you know oh, uh, uh, okay to ye tarika to ho gaya unko ye batane ka ki ha what has happened but man uh, lijiye we want to tell them about this कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेथ मान लो वी जस्ट वॉन्ट टू यू नो मेक दम अंडरस्टैंड कि हाँ ऐसा भी होता है 
the things are not permanent or uh, i think there are some beautiful books also like uh, paper dolls by julia donaldson तो उसमें भी उन्होंने बड़े अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन किया है कि सारी चीज़ें हमारी मेमोरीज में होती हैं छोटे 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 बच्चों के लिए इस तरीके से उन्होंने बताया भी है बताएं कैसे बताएं कि ऐसा होता है कुछ मान लीजिए हमारी लाइफ में सब सही भी चल रहा है बट वी वांट टू टेल देम अबाउट डेथ सो दैट दे आर प्रिपेयर इफ समथिंग हैपन समय तो एक उस उस चीज को हम किस तरीके से ब्रिंग अप कर सकते हैं ओके okay. इसके दो एक्चुअली इट्स लिटिल डिफरेंस आपके लिए जैसे आप बिल्कुल छोटे बच्चों के बारे में अगर बात करेंगे सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड और फाइव ईयर ओल्ड और सेवन ईयर ओल्ड उनके लिए स्लाइटली डिफरेंट होगा एज अपोज टू समबडी यूज ओल्डर ओके बिकॉज देखिए एक बात याद रखना है इफ समबडी इज फाइव और सिक्स ईयर ओल्ड उनका उतना कैपेसिटी है ओके सो यू इट्स लाइक आपके पास सिक्सटी वॉट बल्ब है और उसमें आप पूरा हंड्रेड वॉट पार्ट डालने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं वो मत कीजिएगा That is not the right approach. Okay, so simple things like often, like you know, for like let's say a really small child to talk about it is perhaps like you know to bring about um, uh, you know death. Often you know also brings about another question, which uh, is about God. By the way, which I briefly touched about in mm-hmm. uh, the book, and it is a very comforting factor. And I'm not talking about religion here. Okay, log is cos. समझना बहुत जरूरी है रिलीजन इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम गॉड ओके स्पिरिचुअलिटी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम गॉड ओके सो वेन यू हैव वेन यू स्पीक अबाउट यू नो यू डोंट हैव टू बिलीव इन अ पर्टिकुलर गॉड और एनी थिंग बट आई थिंक एवरीबडी इवन एट इन द डीपेस्ट लाइक लेवल वेर दे डोंट बिलीव वी ऑल बिलीव दिस ग्रेटर पार यू कैन कॉल इट नेचर और कॉस्मोस और समथिंग एंड फॉर अ यंग चाइल्ड you know if you add in the concept look there's a greater power and a beautiful one which is full of love where mm-hmm. we all you know start and begin from you have to bring in that concept and then you start talking about death where you can talk about the merging you know mm-hmm. of something into a higher power that is love that is beautiful and that is always with you i think these two go hand in hand where like you know a child is told that look you are not alone in the universe fear is of being alone you are not alone there is something that is always covering you with love and trust me this is not a dishonest statement in your own way you would have felt it everybody in their life feels it at some point that there is something bigger greater loving you in the most beautiful possible way mm-hmm. yes i agree you know, on that and yeah. yeah in your experience will be different from mine so it's not a dishonest statement that you would be telling a child and i'm talking about being honest with your children right so these things shouldn't be a dishonest thing so you have to introduce this concept as well when you talk about the fact that you know things slowly change and you don't have to come in for a 6 year old or 7 year old it's probably not the best thing to come and say look your papa and mama won't be there forever you don't need to be drastic hmm. that is something they also will understand over a period of time just hmm. perhaps to explain to them like something is perishing simple thing your teddy bear is going to tear one day i may not ever be able to fix it back together okay mm-hmm. so if you have pets at home in all likelihood they will see the pets passing on you know mm-hmm. and i think pets can be a beautiful loving experience for any child actually and uh, you know both to teach them about love uh, compassion and you know this passing on uh, you know i'm not saying keep a pet so that they die in your house please don't get me wrong but you mm-hmm. know this is a transition period that often like you know young children learn from in my own family my nephew and niece they understood a lot about death from the passing of our animals we have a, we had a lot of animals in the house we still do and there were young children who you know they honored the entire rituals now again rituals come into uh, come to help a lot mm-hmm. rituals can be of different varieties like so simple thing like you know planting a tree so that next year the flower and the fruits from the tree reminds you of their favorite pet you know i'm not talking about elaborate rituals of from scriptures but simple rituals like this so this is where like i think for a small child when you introduce the concept of things are not going to last forever one has to introduce also the concept of there's something larger and loving holding you that gives them comfort you cannot be drastic don't go out there and tear a piece of paper and say oh look everything breaks no mm. where what is it breaking into give them the whole story it's not just going into anything else there is something much larger as the child grows it's also important which is why i think 
again I'm, I'm emphasizing on our Indian kind of you know culture we have a lot of stories where like you know people are constantly telling you uh, that you know you are not the end you will come back in some form or the other the Jataka tales for that matter beautiful comic mm-hmm. illustrations where Buddha is constantly talking about nothing ends you're coming in Sometimes as a bird, sometimes, you know, maybe even the sun rays, sometimes as a horse or sometimes as like, you know, you're just coming in all the time because the real you never goes. And the real you is always love. And which is why I go back again. If you've constantly taught the child that they are love. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there is something bigger and larger holding them. At some point, you know, these things start making, making a bigger and a larger inroad into life. Mm-hmm. So with younger children this is where you start never make it drastic never make it hurtful but start with like you know give it like you know a cushion don't lie lying is you know don't say like you know they've gone somewhere and they'll come back you know that's faffing around right now they're not coming back but look there is something beautiful and bigger learn to speak to them also about the universe or the largeness or whatever if you call it god or you know nature or something that is also an important concept to speak about it brings a huge lot of comfort yes yes i agree on that and that is uh, very beautifully explained the way you have said it and now nandita you also tell us ki how do we help children in dealing with loss and grief when someone dies in their family in their loved ones so first thing both for children and adults grief now people think it has like a deadline hmm. okay ki this has to be do mahine mein khatam hona hai teen mahine mein 10 years mein khatam hota hai ye pure lifetime reh sakta hai first accept that yeah. okay so for people who like you know if you are a support system for somebody who has lost someone please first accept wo do mahine mein they're not going to run around in fact grief deepens over time wo the te- yeah. first first 10 days of losing someone na is actually the easiest wo to ab ro loge ha ro loge and you also said ki uh, first stage is also denial ki kai baar hum mante bhi nahi hai mante bhi nahi hai But, and you have 10 people around you who thoda bahut you know comfort denge apne tarah 48 hours the people will give you comfort after that they will talk about what dinner should be made that's life okay then grief enters a very personal stage mm-hmm. even let's say let's say you have lost your father your uh, if you have a sibling they have also lost the father how they will be processing it is different from you as opposed to how your mother is processing the loss of a husband okay so mm-hmm. the grief is going to be very different for everyone and it will keep deepening in waves so one day you might feel nothing is to kuch bhi nahi hai then suddenly one day after th- maybe two years it will hit you and you're like oh my god this person is gone mm-hmm. okay so grief comes in phases there is no deadline for it first accept it okay second part is people feel that grief uh, other people will help me with grief nobody is going to help you with your grief like i said do din mein na do din mein kya if we have all experienced it 12 ghante mein chai aur samosa ka intezam hota hai when you mm. lost people right mm. i'm not saying it's good or bad ye life yeah, hai bhaiya but it's life yeah. okay it's life all right so then how do you get to the space where you start dealing with it okay i'll come to the children part of it because that's where they need parental support first thing is be kind be understanding that the, this grief can last forever so don't say it will have to get over now there can be intense spaces of grief where you do not want to speak to people allow yourself that comfort even if it's for a child you know don't go and say beta speak to me speak to me ab kya soch rahe ho kya soch rahe ho don't do that grief is processed in silence also okay mm. it is not constantly needed ki you know your sad beta chalo let's go buy you something please don't do that let that person actually be alone figure out you know let that person be alone there's one slight thing i want to bring up here sometimes you know especially with adults and even teenagers grief can tend in, tend to go into depression be a mm. little watchful of that you know uh, mm. where there is constant isolation food habits are changing be watchful of that that is steering into depression that is probably a space where you will need a little professional help yes okay uh, be watchful of that you might need somebody you can go speak to 
you know, vent out that kind of an emotion. But otherwise, silence is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next aspect is people often tend to think with children, they'll go, parents might say, chalo beta, let's buy you something. Aaj let's go for dinner. Material things will not fulfill or solve your grief. So as an as a adult, you might think, Abhi, I can go and buy a new pair of clothes. You will not feel better about it. I'm not saying don't buy it. It's not going to finally solve it. Okay. Or mm. help you with it. What mm. actually has lasting impacts and both for children and adults mm. is the healing uh, power of arts. There mm. is no two ways about it. Okay. Uh, whether it's music, uh, whether it is arts or like, you know, like drawing or something or reading, or sometimes just plain listening to music, okay? They have a tremendous healing effect. And I highly recommend it. And this is where even if you're stepping into a stage of depression, it can help pull you out. It's amazing. And yes, listening to music and maybe just like probably reading a book and these things have its effect. But if you're hands-on into something like, you know, sitting and painting, sitting with the teacher who's helping you painting or like, you know, singing or learning an instrument. These have a power which is beyond understanding. So fall back on those spaces. And if you're lucky if like, you know, if, if you have as a child been learning music, you know, um, if you haven't, that's also fine. Maybe that's something one should explore. Uh, because, you know, art and music, these come from very deep spaces. And the love I was talking about, and have a healing effect, which nothing else can have. So this is how you need to kind of, you know, and always, you know, if somebody is, has lost someone, uh, you don't have to always sit and talk about it to them. Don't think they want to like, you know, discuss it all the time. Sometimes they may want to, like, for instance, they might just want to talk about the person. Don't give them advice then. They just want you to listen. Mm. Because, you know, when we talk about someone, we're making that person come alive in front of us. Mm, yeah. so you're just giving them that space to vent and bring that person to life for 10 minutes don't lose your patience there as a friend as a sister as a daughter as a mother so let's say a child has lost their pet and they want to keep talking talking about Jackie don't keep saying Jackie is not there Jackie, Jackie is there in her memory Jackie used to play ball with her so let her keep talking about Jackie these are venting mechanisms and this is where finally the grief starts getting into something positive. Please understand grief has a very positive aspect as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which happiness cannot give you. Only grief can teach you certain things. Right. Okay, so, nice. uh, so, okay. So first thing, when you're happy, all right, you're happy at a level. Happiness is something you can share with lots of people, right? Grief and sadness teaches you the first step of uh, knowing how to be with yourself. How many people will sit with you in your grief? And don't you think we need to know how to be with ourselves? All our adult lives, even children by the time, especially now, they're only scrolling through Instagram reels. You know what they're doing? Because they cannot, they, they're lonely. Nobody knows the art of being alone. Yeah. You can't even sit in your own company. How will you be company to anybody else? So grief and sadness teaches you that if you're open to it. If, if you're not open to it, then you will escape it. You will do, like I said, most of us will go buy things in your adult life. Hum jaate hai, we'll go and have alcohol. You know. Uh, this but is you how also mentioned in your book that distractions feel good in the moment, but uske baad you feel even more emptiness. Right? Bilkul. Bilkul. So it is not going to help you. I'm not saying like, you know, so there can be a moment where like, you know, uh, you can like, so in the book, like the one of the characters, she actually goes and has like junk food. It's a way of connecting with her friend. But you see, these are sometimes, so you can go watch the sunset because it reminds you of someone, but you have to do it in a wholesome manner. If for instance, somebody is only sitting and eating junk food, you're not packing up your grief there. You are just mm -hmm. kind of getting into some bifurcation. And this is where we all come back to the first space. Then, you know, you have to meet grief and death headlong. We bypass it. We have to left turn. We have to do it. That's when you see sadness and all these things are not bad things. 
something that teaches you to be with yourself something that tells you actually start showing you your own worth how can it be a bad thing and can you imagine if you start using it as a teacher and you understand your own worth what a beautiful support system you can be for the rest of the world yeah i i i think we need to know how to if you can't sit with yourself can you sit with me let's begin with that you can't mm-hmm. so what relief can you provide me so uh, i think we you know we become like you know flaming lights when we can understand and use sadness in a way that can help everybody around us so um, th- this is how like you know grief is a very beautiful thing it's not a bad thing at all and then we are always sitting and thinking kal hum mar jayenge to kya hoga the first thing you'll realize is hum marte hi nahi yaar mm marte hi nahi hai what a beautiful thought <laughs> yeah no uh, you said uh, let the kids talk about the lo- a loved one who has passed away and uh, then what else we can do yeah what else we could do is again like you know child i think if is going through uh, some children are perhaps a little more sensitive than the other okay everybody has a different level of processing it i highly highly always recommend put the child into a space where they are able to uh, you know so this could be so some children you know they're very physical for that child maybe some high activity of sport can burst out a certain level of energy and grief i have known like you know i have students who are young and sometimes uh, when they have gone through losing people they used to do high level of cycling it might sound weird but cycling you know mm-hmm. and another thing uh, nature just you know going out there somewhere in a quiet place and when i say nature you know you don't have to go to some fancy place in the hills sometimes you know just in a colony to sit with a tree under mm-hmm. a tree or you know just like you know teaching a child to touch a tree just quietly to touch a tree has a uh, various uh, healing effects you know so the uh, to be around nature another thing um, animals mm-hmm. you know um, animals are a huge processor of grief they are like literally having your own hot back when you're in pain and they have a higher sensitivity and i think i the reason i have there's a dog in the book and mm-hmm. it's not an abrupt usage of a dog because i have grown up with animals therefore i've seen it myself uh um, animals you know in their silence and their understanding of life communicate a lot more especially to children because children are not close to ideas adults are no? adults think we know everything hame mm-hmm. sab pata hai Uh, is ke hame kya bol rahe ho aap okay yeah. and uh, you can't like so we have our blockages children don't animals to aapke ghar mein koi pet nahi hai to don't go buy a pet please don't do that but there are various shelters okay go to a shelter sit with you know an animal a puppy play with the animal teach your child to do this i'm telling if you're going through grief or you know go and maybe for half an hour buy some food for the animals there the joy i am telling you it will all help you process grief these are just things you know there are no like there's no practicality to it per se but you know it's a beautiful way so animals and nature are very helpful it's god's gift it's god's gift which we don't see instead of going and buying one lego set mm. uh, buying a car or treating your child to 10 dominos and mcdonalds make the child sit in a place where there are just trees and you know maybe just i mean if you are lucky enough to have a stream or something or spend time with you know uh, animals this is something i highly recommend uh, for anyone you know even if you are an adult and i know some people will say but we are scared of animals maybe this is the way to drop fear also hmm think about whatever it. you have said yeah i think it is applicable for both yes uh, adults and kids so mm-hmm. okay and i'd like to uh, quote one of the lines from your book here it's one stitch at a time to mend this hole but the patch will always show like 
it will always be there the feeling the grief it will be there it was really interesting talking to you i learned a lot of new things i think i will also use them in my life for myself and uh, i would love to tell others about them as well but before i let you go please tell us a little more about your work Yeah well first thing you know thank you I mean I mean I'm, that is actually a very close topic to my heart and people find it like uh, depressing but I don't and which is why I think we need to have more conversations about it so thank you for you know having me here speaking about the book and everything so my work I mean I'm a graphic artist and a musician both have helped me tremendously in my personal losses that I have gone through and it still helps me cope with uh, you know different mood swings uh, it's not just about death like i said like you know uh, very sometimes i plummet into very sad states of sadness and art has been a huge kind of a you know uh, cushion for me so uh, b- between being a graphic novelist and uh, a musician like uh, i don't think i do anything else but i do write uh, both for adults and children and my stories are not specifically only for children i just believe in putting a story out there and for me children are not like you know some uh, people out there who need to be spoken down to i feel mm-hmm. they have a much higher emotional quotient so i which is why i wrote starry starry night for them and the adults are coming mm-hmm. and telling me this is too serious but i'm not joking my students who are kind of young they're like this is the best book you've ever written Mm-hmm. wow no, even so, i loved it a lot i read it in two days like i used to sit at night around 9:30 and read it and my husband was like ab so jao kal pad lena i thought ki okay chalo aadhi aaj aadhi kal mujhe finish karni hai and i could not put it down even though it is a very serious topic i did not tell anyone what it is about but uh, i really enjoyed reading it and the way you have handled death you have uh, you know created these characters jaise tara ka character hai she does not try to interfere ki uh, kunal ab aise chalo mere sath chalo ghumne chalo if he wants to sit alone she lets him be to ye cheeze mujhe badi uh, understanding lagi aur bahut acha approach laga so i really enjoyed reading it yeah thank you so much thank you so much okay nandita thank you so much for being on little pixels and giving us your time the pleasure is all mine thank you so much अगर आपको ये एपिसोड वैल्यूबल लगा तो प्लीज हेल्प लिटिल फिक्सेस रीच मोर पीपल बाय शेयरिंग इट विद समवन यू केयर अबाउट यू कैन आल्सो गिव अस अ शाउट आउट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम मेरा हैंडल है एट लिटिल फिक्सेस पॉडकास्ट दिस हेल्प्स मी इन ग्रोइंग द पॉडकास्ट और बहुत सारे और लोगों की हेल्प भी होती है इसको सुनके आई एम ग्रेटफुल फॉर योर टाइम अब मिलते हैं नेक्स्ट वेंसडे को तब तक के लिए खुद से प्यार करते रहो और सदा सैसी रहो बाय When I started this podcast in 2019 I didn't know much about the tools available and struggled with poor audio quality blurry videos and even losing the recording Now I have switched to Zencaster Zencaster not only gives me high quality audio and video podcast production but also keeps the recording safe with its multi layer backups even when the internet is unstable It has a post production feature which automatically removes sounds like um ah uh, and also reduces background noise with a click of a button Go to zencaster.com/pricing and use my code LFP and you will get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster a paid plan i want you to have the same easy experiences i do for all my podcasting and content needs it's time to share your story zencaster is free to try and their hobbies plan is always free